Nice. This must have cost Mr. Oil Wells a neat sum. Oh, everything is so expensive these days. How expensive, Tony? Very nice. Sometimes when I was sweating out that stretch for you, I'd wake up in the night and forget where I was. I'd reach out in the darkness and grab an armful of air. We did have some good times together, baby, didn't we? You must remember that. I stopped remembering a long time ago. Remember how I used to tinker around in the basement trying to invent something? It would make us rich. <sighs> yes, no invention can improve on nature. A girl has to live. She can't wait around forever. She has to live. Are you sure of that, Crystal? Yeah. And now you're getting the idea. That's what I had in mind all these years. So Tony kept his mouth shut and went on tinkering and remembering. They have places for that even in prison, you know. How much do you want, Tony? You're not the only one that likes expensive things. Seven years of hunger can give a man a real appetite for expensive things. I ask you how much. For what I want. You won't need your checkbook. Hey, that's an oldie. Remember that one? The old tunes are the best. The old tunes, the old loves. Where are we going? You called it, Tony. What about Mr. Oilwell? Mr. Wincliffe is in San Francisco on business. And the chauffeur? There's no one at the beach house this time of year. No one at all. I should be cozy. It's a long drive. I'd better get some gas. It's my business. This is where we part company. I don't understand. I bet you don't. Nobody ever walked out on you, did they, baby? Nobody ever turned down such an invitation. That's what I had in mind when I gave you that spiel about those seven hungry years. I wanted you to learn what it feels like to have the only thing you can offer thrown back at your face. Don't you get it? I'm the stupid fool that sweated out seven years in a cell because I loved you. You were in my blood. Even when I knew about all the other men, I ripped your pictures apart. A thousand times I've smashed your face until it wouldn't look good to any man. For seven years, I dreamed of what I'd do when I got out and found you again. Tony. And last night I did find you. I went to that club. Saw the woman I'd gone through so much for. A fancy saloon tramp. Is that why you wrote the letter to me? Just to tell me that. I didn't intend to tell you anything. I wrote the letter so you'd know I was out. 
So you could do a little sweating for a change. I never intended to see you again. I've had it, baby. I'm cured. I don't want you anymore in the beach house or anywhere else. Wait. Don't get out of here. Oh, I get it. You're known here. Yes, I am. And you wouldn't want a shabby bum like me getting out of your car under all these lights. Any more than you wanted me to be seen at the club. The dressing room. After the last show. Those were the directions. You're very understanding, Tom. Nice try, baby. But you're not getting through. Thank you. You've kept it. No, thanks, baby. I don't want this gift either. Would you please sign this, ma'am? It's a terrible pen you've got there. Can you read the signature? Uh, I sure can, ma'am. They were working on it yesterday. Boulevard? Um, yes, it's okay now. Fine, I'll stay on the boulevard. It's easy to get careless, isn't it, Tony? Why did you set up this cozy rendezvous? If you thought I was going to kill you. As you said, Tony, there's always a record left somewhere. A record? Proof of our marriage. Fortunately, you're the only person on this earth who'd ever think to look for it. Look, I told you I didn't want any part of you. And I wouldn't dream of spoiling your setup with Wincliffe. Any man that marries you deserves all the grief he gets, even if it isn't legal. Let me out at that bus stop. You can't get a bus this time of night. Then I'll walk. You don't have to walk, Tony. I'll take you where you're going. What is this? Is your pride wounded or something? Do you still think you can stir up the embers at that beach house? Maybe that's it. And maybe it is. What's that? The police! You should have killed me back at the station, Tony, but I knew you wouldn't. You never had that kind of nerve. I don't want your money. Nerve to get what you want and keep it. But I don't want your Please, money! Tony, the first lesson I ever learned was that you can't trust a man. Don't! don't. this statement to the station attendant, Miss Coe? Yes. May I? 
It was the only thing I could think to do. I was so frightened. Well, did you know this man? No, I'd, I'd never seen him before. He was waiting in the car when I, I left the club after the last show. Mm-hmm. With this gun? Yes. I... I thought he wanted money. I... I offered him my purse, but he wouldn't get out. I saw the service station up ahead, and... I, I knew there was a police car behind me. And, uh, then he, he heard the siren, and, and, and he made me drive faster, and... I... I stopped the car suddenly, and then he dropped the gun. We... struck for... It went off. <laughs> Lieutenant, you heard my wife's story. And you have the statement of the station attendant, also the officer in the police car. Now, it's been a very rough night, and I'd like to take my wife home as soon as possible. Well, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. Bum crawled in the car in the parking lot, got himself shot, struggling for the gun. That's about the size of it. Well, thank you very much for your help, Miss Coe. I won't need to detain you any further. Of course, you'll have to appear before the judge. It's just a formality, and then you'll be free to go.